Okay, this is the flipped classroom presentation for the weekend reading. So this is Hamlet, Act 4, Scene 1, through Act 4, Scene 4. Key questions for these scenes. How is the conflict between Hamlet and Claudius affecting the King and the Queen's union? From Act 4, Scene 2 and 3. What are the purposes, or what purposes could be served by Hamlet's irreverence or flippancy? How does Hamlet's encounter with Fortinbras's army affect him? But first we have sentence pattern number 16. This one's one of my favorites. Paired constructions. That's all we can say, paired constructions. Not only, but also, so, not only does Ophelia betray Hamlet, but she is also made an orphan by him. Just as Prince Hamlet has aspirations to ascend to the throne his murdered father once held, so too does Prince Fortinbras. The more Hamlet delays avenging his father's death, the more dead bodies begin to pile up. And then last one. If not, at least... Just as slavery divided North and South, so too did the Indian Wars of the 19th century divide East and West. Oops, typo there. The moral ambiguity of Shakespeare's Hamlet is not only complicated by Hamlet, the Avenger, being manipulated into committing murder, but also because Hamlet, now having murdered Polonius, has cast himself as Laertes and Ophelia's nemesis. To live the life of the individual, one must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. Some more examples. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. And then we have just a couple of more examples from other works of literature that we'll be reading soon after we get done with Hamlet. So a couple more pairs in this paired constructions. Whether or, so that, such that, not only this, more than that, that, both and, neither a borrower nor a lender be, not so. We're going to have a review of the first five soliloquies because it is in Act 4, Scene 4 that Hamlet delivers his final soliloquy. And in Act 1, Scene 2, Hamlet's initial soliloquy. Before we analyze that, just a soliloquy. It's a dramatic convention in which a character in a play alone on stage speaks his or her thoughts aloud Playwrights employ the soliloquy as a device to provide the audience with information about that character's motives, plans, and state of mind, and to explain earlier events and action that have occurred off stage. Soliloquies, because generally there is no audience who could be deceived by an actor's or a character's statements, soliloquies are thought to be authentic feeling. Back to the first soliloquy. Hamlet delivers this one, oh, that this too, too solid or solid, solid, solid or solid flesh would melt. Um, in this soliloquy, Hamlet's depressed state, his despondency, his melancholy nature are displayed 
He speaks about the meaninglessness of the world since his father, whom he clearly counted on, is dead, and his mother, whom he clearly counted on, has behaved in bewildering and disgusting ways. The soliloquy also seems to suggest Hamlet's virtue in um, finding their behavior abhorrent and wanting to uphold a higher standard. The second soliloquy comes in Act 1, Scene 5, after Hamlet has had his encounter with the ghost. Key lines is, Hamlet says, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records. This is his commitment to fulfilling the ghost's command. He says he will think of nothing but avenging his father's murder. It's also worth noting that it's in this soliloquy just a couple of lines later that his conflicted feelings towards his mother come out and blur his intentions. The third soliloquy, at the end of the very long Act Two, Scene Two, um, that is filled with Hamlet's antic disposition. In this soliloquy, which begins, Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I, um, Hamlet expresses his disgust with his self, and he berates his self for his lack of action, for not having avenged his father's death. He ultimately tries to motiv motivate himself to action, and that's where he comes up with the idea that the play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Act 3, Scene 1, certainly the most famous soliloquy in all of literature. Uh, Hamlet's to be or not to be is considering whether or not to commit suicide. Um, interestingly, um, the not to be means, you know, uh, to kill yourself, but to be and... Uh, the blunted action of not following through with something, suicide, mirrors the blunted action of Hamlet in his revenge against Claudius. Hamlet's shortest soliloquy at the end of Act 3 and Scene 2 um, has Hamlet saying, Now I could drink hot blood, as he is in a murderous rage, perhaps ready to commit murder although he does caution himself because he's going to speak his with his mother, that he will only speak daggers to her. It is interesting that immediately after seeing that, he doesn't go to see his mother. He goes to see, or he runs into Claudius in the confessional. So your assignment in reading uh, this final soliloquy in Act 4, Scene 4, lines 34 through 69, is to paraphrase Hamlet's final soliloquy in your notebook. That's it for this flipped classroom. I'll see you on Monday.